When we have a project in school or a question, my teacher asks like, what genes did you inherit? Like in science, you know? And I, uh, I kind of go, I don't know, you know? <laughs> Berkeley is like the liberal mecca. If you're different, then you fit into Berkeley. I'm not afraid to say I'm adopted because that's something to be proud of. When you're over here, nobody looks like you. You're like the only Asian person within 500 feet. I don't think my friends really realize that I'm Chinese. They're just like, you're just like me, you're white. I'm a banana. I'm yellow on the outside and white on the inside. <laughs> I've had a few people come up to me and say, do you speak English? And whenever they do that, I say, well, I probably speak it better than you, thanks. So the fact that I was probably giving up just because I was a girl doesn't really bother me. In America, it's more like, I'm a girl, I can do what you can do, and I can do it in heels, so deal. Everyone else's beginnings seem very, like, sure. And you never think about why you were born into a certain family if you're just born there, because physically, like in science, it makes sense. But if you're put there, it's different. It's like a different thought. When I hear the word immigration, I think about how hard it is to get a visa from China to here. I think about stories where people are like smuggled over borders and things like that. And you know, I'm proud to be a first generation immigrant. It's making history. I think that transracial families shines light on what race means because it forces people to deal with racial issues and what it means to be a family, what it means to be a race, what it means to be American. It's kind of a struggle to find the balance and how much does your past play out, how much does it matter. I don't think that I could ever consider myself fully Chinese or fully American. I think that no matter where I am in my life, I'm always going to be sort of somewhere in between. Mm -hmm.